Welcome, everyone. Uh, I'm here to, t to tell you something about signals. Um, first, what are they? When I, I once asked Tom Christensen, the author of Perl IPC, why do you put signals as the first thing in there? And he replied, because it's the simplest form of IPC. <laughs> in a way, he has a point, because conceptually what it does is a fairly simple thing. However, as with, man with many things, simple things have very, very complicated implications, often far more complicated than something that was a bit more initially a bit more complicated. Signals are a form of IPC that is that's asynchronous with process execution. That means whatever, the, whatever it was doing, it stops doing that and, ha and does something with the signal. If you're lucky, it might continue again. Um, that all depend on, depends on how you've set up your signals. The thing that makes them so complicated is they're very orthogonal with pretty much anything else in Unix. Um, and it's even, worse on, I'm not, it's even worse on Windows. I'm not even going to talk about Windows because signals on Windows are sadly unusable. Um, yeah, there are different types of, there are many different types of signals. Uh, all signals have an identifier, which is actually just a number, but we don't refer to them by numbers, we refer to them by their names. Um, funny detail, half of CPAN does this subtly wrong because Perl IPC had a bug and everyone copy pasted from Perl IPC. Um, the, the identifiers allow you to differentiate between different meanings. Some signals are good, some are very, very bad. Uh, different signals have different defaults. For example, uh, most signals are actually terminal by default. Some with, a sec some with the core dump, some not. Some signals are ignored by default, some signals um, do job control. I'll get back to that later. To make matters even worse, some have even different semantics in even more different ways, such as permissions. This, oh, oh, no crap. Um, some signals, um, some signals, uh, some signals indicate deliberate termination. For example, a sigint or a sig term. Uh, in those two cases, what you really want to do is maybe leave files in a coherent state if you can, but exit as soon as possible. Sikil is, Sikil, uh, is special too. This talk has a lot of comeback later because it's very r circular referential conceptually. Sorry about that. Um, then there are faults. The best known, best known example of that would be the sec fault. I think all of you know that and uh, hate that. Um, these signals can generally not be handled in any meaningful way. Your process must die, not soon, it must die now. Um, then there are various events. Uh, for example, sig alarm, sig child, sig urgent. Uh, these are all fairly innocent, can be handled in a very easy way. You can postpone handling them a bit without any kind of uh, problem. Um, by the way, sick child and sick urgent are the only signals in POSIX that are by default ignored. You should assume that any other signal is a termina is terminates. Well, except of course the next one, job control. Which is, job control is basically what happens in, in your shell when you press Control Z on later type FG. Job control does. It hibernates, it hibernates a process and it can't do anything until it's uh, revived again. Um, most people don't really do anything with this explicitly because the defaults are fairly sensible, but you can handle those too. And then there's, of course, uh, the user-defined signals. Uh, the only ones that are like truly portable are sick user one and sick user two. These do not have any implicit meaning. You can give them a meaning if you need to. Uh, otherwise, they're terminating as uh, pretty much anything else. 
Chickens are good at that. Um, yeah. The signal action. Um, when you, all signals have a default action, but you can also do other things with it. You can, um, when you set the signal action, you set three different things. The first is the disposition. There are three dispositions. The defaults, which I just explained. Ignore, very useful, which means this signal is ignored, nothing is done with it, it goes to dev null. And there's a handler you can set up yourself, which is where it gets interesting. Um, secondly, you can set flags. Uh, most of those flags are not interesting for um, pro-level um, applications. The one that is most commonly used uh, would be the restart flag. I'll get back to that later. And then there's masks, which I'll get back later too. Sorry. Um, handler. I assume uh, the upper example, I assume most of you have done that at least in some point of your pro career. There is some signal, you want to handle it, so you assign a handler to the uh, signal a hash. Uh, this doesn't set any uh, flags or masks, but in 90% of all cases, this is uh, sufficient. The second example, it kind of falls off the screen because it's small, is doing it the hard way. Um, there are some uses for that, but I have, how many of you have used the second way ever? <coughs> yeah, fair enough. Um, yeah. However, there are two signals that are special. That's sick kill, which obviously kills a process, and sick stop which uh, suspends the process. These cannot be handled in any way. They always have their default action. They cannot be stopped or blocked or anything. Um, that's very useful if, you're, if you really, really want the process to die. You say kill minus nine or minus kill process ID and it's gone. Uh, except, of, except when you first send the six stop because when it's sleeping it can't be killed. If only real life was like that. Um, yes, blocking. There's another thing that is orthogonal to handling, uh, say, to the handling, and it's very important to realize it's something really orthogonal, is blocking. Blocking is something that's usually temporary, and what you say is, I do not want this signal now. Um, when you ignore a signal, it will be thrown away. When you block a signal, you will not receive it until you unblock it. And as soon as you unblock it, you will receive it immediately. This is very important because this is the only, this is basically the only reliable way that you can use to say this section of code should not be interfered by signals. Really not, then everything goes wrong. Um, the canonical way to do this is SIG proc mask, which is fairly powerful. Um, I've also written a, I've written a signal mask function which exposes this in a very easy hash interface where you can just say signal mask int is one and then it's blocked, which makes a lot of easy cases easy, even if there are some complicated cases where you do need the full power of a SIG proc mask. Now that I've now that I'm finally here, I get to the fun slide. Oh, what? no, that's the next, sorry. <laughs> I rearranged my slides. Being interrupted. Um, as I referred to in my first slide, um, when, when a process receives a signal, it stops whatever it's doing. And there are two, there are two possibilities, either it's in user land, which means it's ordinary code. What happens is, no, if, it, if the process survives, is nothing you can notice. It will be interrupted, it, it, it will stop what it's doing, go somewhere else, it will do whatever the signal handler does, it goes back and not, as if nothing has happened, if you've written your code correctly. A big if. 
It's very different with syscalls, because sick, when in sick calls, it's, you are already in the kernel, which means you have to go back to user land, then run the signal handler, and what should you do then? There are two possibilities here. Either you return an error, or you restart the uh, syscall. Uh, this is the main use of the flag parameter that I've mentioned earlier. Which of the two it does tends to be fairly unportable. Um, Sysv-like systems like Linux tend to prefer to uh, return an error. BSDs prefer to, re to restart. In most cases, it's not well defined which one must be done. Either is allowed. But you can, using the restart flag, you can ask, I want the restart behavior, which um, makes which is very convenient in a lot of cases, but may in, in some other cases make, makes correct code harder to write. It's easy, easy, it makes easy things easier, it makes hard things harder. It's a trade-off. Um, yeah. Um, the source of signals. Signals can roughly come from three different sources. Uh, that is, the system, for example, uh, you're out of memory, idiot, idiot, you're gonna die. Or um, you've set an alarm and now it went off. Uh, secondly, there, it can come from another process. Um, if, if you do this, then you deal with permissions. Uh, roughly set, the effective user ID or saved user ID must match the real or saved user ID of the receiver. This is why you should pretty much never change the real user ID, and I kind of get, I rant at people who do that without thinking. Um, thirdly, you can, threats can send each other uh, signals, specifically targeted at threats, which brings me to the fun slide. Signals and threats. The really short summary would be don't. <laughs> and here's why. Uh, handlers. In POSIX, signal handlers are per process. In Perl, however, they are per interpreter, thus per thread. Uh, this mismatch causes an interesting series of bugs that some of them are not really fixable because it's just too much of a mismatch. Blocking is per thread. This is actually uh, the most sensible part of this slide, because you block because you're doing something that's not signal safe, but that not doing something is threat specific. Um, however, this interacts in interesting ways with the delivery, uh, delivery mechanism because the reception of signals. Signals can either be targeted at a process or a threat. Now, except for faults or deliberate interthread signaling, all signals are delivered to a process. Um, POSIX says the, signal, the thread that receives the signal is not is, uh, um, unspecified. That means that that SIG alarm might not go to the thread that set up the, the alarm in the SIG alarm handler. It can go to any non-blocking thread. And most implementations tend to prefer the main thread, but that's no guarantee. And this basically means that even an alarm, SIG alarm kind of setup does not work with multi-threading. Lastly, there's threads kill. Um, they managed to put a kill method in there that actually doesn't send a signal, but cheats the uh, cheats the, del the delayed signal uh, queue. Uh, can you ask it after the, is it very urgent? I'll get back to that later. Okay. Uh, th thread scale, it's a fake. It cheats a signal in the, in the, thre in the internal thread queue, but it doesn't interrupt anything which is kind of the point of signals. Um, which brings me to, safe, to signal safety. Um, 
POSIX says, and this is, I put this quote deliberately because it's fairly important to understand this, when a signal interrupts an unsafe function and the signal catching function calls an unsafe function, the behavior is undefined. At first sight, this may not sound that bad, but it really, really is. Reason number one is, what is undefined? Undefined is you may wake up Skynet and it may sacrifice your eldest born to the, to the, to the glory of Baalzebub. It might also crash your process or lose data, but really anything is allowed to happen and it's your fault. You never want to trigger undefined, never. Um, now then the next question is what is safe? Um, safe is essentially a short list of syscalls. For threats, they actually manage to have a list of these, these functions are not threat safe and all the others are. With signals, they didn't manage to do that. It was just impossible. So they, instead, they made a list of this 70 or 80 syscalls are safe and anything else is verboten. Uh, except, of course, writing to a volatile SIG atomic T, which is a signed integer guaranteed to be at least the size of a byte. <laughs> Yes. Um, yeah, the, there are some useful things that are safe, but pretty much anything that's user land is out. Um, thing is, Perl is inherently not signal safe because it's doing so many things, most importantly malloc, allocating memory, that are so inherently in, unsafe that you cannot really, you cannot usually um, run Perl in the signal handler itself in a safe way. That's why since 5.8 we have this thing called delayed signal handling. Um, that means we get the signal, we put it in a queue, and, F and quite often we check is there anything in the queue and then we run, run the signal ha handler. Um, this is much, much safer. It also introduces some interesting racing conditions, unfortunately, but at least it doesn't crash. Um, some people, however, still use, uh, some people, however, still use the unsa unsafe signal handlers because running the handlers is done fr from Perl. And that means that, hmm, one? Oh, crap. Um, that means, uh, because if you're deep into XS, then that handler will not be run. And if you want to die through a signal handler from deep into XS to get out of it, then you pretty much have no option other than uh, doing this. However, um, this results in, un in like never-ending undefinedness. Because you're returning to some place that was not the place that was interrupted, whatever you are doing is never finished. So this means that the undefined situation that characterizes the signal handler now continues for the rest of your program and it can sack fault or crash and burn or whatever at any possible time in the future and it's your fault. Not pearls, not the system. Ah. <laughs> oh. um, <coughs> race conditions. Anyone here see the race condition in this piece of code? Pause is wait for a signal. The race condition is this. Um, if, af if after the pause, between the pause and the is not seen, uh, a signal arrives, then pause is never interrupted. So even though the scene has been set, the pause is never interrupted, so it will wait forever. This is a similar kind of racing condition that currently exists in Perl Core and is not really possible to fix in any portable way. Um, signals are like that. Uh, fixing this looks about like this, which is like twice as complicated. What you do, you, you block a signal, then you set the signal handler, and six suspend does temporarily unblock it during the suspend um, so the signal can't arrive in between. 
one of the interesting implications of this, because the definition I shown, unsafe means, means both sides are, are un, if, if both sides are unsafe, you're in trouble. Six suspend is signal safe, which means that whenever six suspend is interrupted, you can safely run anything in a signal handler. That's, this is like the only case where you can basically run anything and it should not crash. Um, I'm going to skip on that one. A more simple approach would be this, uh, the sig wait that he mentioned. What you do, you block it and then you just call sig wait to get it off the system's queue directly. This mean, this way you skip all of signal handlers and all of the unsafety and there's nothing scary about this. Uh, if you're, um, if you don't absolutely need something to be uh, interrupted, then this can be like a very sane way to handle that. Um, event loops. Um, yes, I have to mention those two, even though I'm mostly focusing on low level stuff. Event loops are very useful for like any signal that's like not, urg not that urgent. Uh, they take away a lot of, they take away some of the craziness, um, but if you're like having something that, but you can't always guarantee, you know, this has to be handled and this has to be handled now. So if you're in a hurry, you kind of should use the real thing. Otherwise, they tend to make life more easy. The end. I don't think I have time for bonus slides. 